Our question is differentiate between the two branches of chemistry, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. And we have to give examples for both. So organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is dealing with the carbon compound which has carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in them. For example, methane that is CH4 and methyl alcohol. These all compounds contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and they are belong to organic chemistry. Inorganic chemistry includes the study of oxides of carbons, for example, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. They are oxide of carbon. Then carbonates, they are CO3. Bicarbonates, they are HCO3 and H2CO3. So these are the compounds which are belongs to inorganic chemistry. All the acids, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acids are also belongs to inorganic chemistry. Examples are carbon monoxide, carbonic acid that is H2CO3. So all these compounds belongs to inorganic chemistry. Our question is state how carbon occurs in free state and in combined state. So in free state carbon occurs in two major forms in earth crust. First one is crystal form and second one is amorphous form. The example of crystal forms are diamond and graphite and amorphous forms examples are coal. So, so carbon occur in nature in mainly two forms that is crystal and amorphous. Combined state carbon occur in three different ways. In atmosphere it is present in the form of carbon dioxide. It is also present in the form of hydrocarbon in natural gas and petroleum and it is also present in plant, animal and wood in the form of carbohydrate and mineral. Our question is define the term allotropy and second is give reason why carbon exhibit allotropy. So let us understand first definition allotropy. Allotropy is the existence of an element in this three characteristic property. So this three property we have to understand when we are understanding allotropy. So element can exist in more than one physical form. For example, diamond and graphite. So their physical forms are different, but they have same constituent element and that is carbon. So physically they are different. Then second, having different physical properties. Now physical properties means their MPs, BPs are different. Their structural arrangement is different. Third is but the same graded chemical properties. They are differing in physical properties but they must have same chemical properties because their constituent element is same and that is carbon. So all these three characteristic properties if two forms of element is possessing that means they are showing allotropy. Our second question is give a reason why carbon exhibit allotropy. So a chemical element exhibits allotropy when it can have a stable existence in more than one crystal form. That means carbon has capability to show or exhibit allotropy because it has it more than one crystal form and that is diamond and graphite. Carbon has a difference in atomic arrangement in crystal structure which results in allotropy. As we can see the Diamond and graphite are structurally different, but their same constituent element is carbon. So carbon can show allotropy. So carbon shows allotropy in the form of diamond and graphite. Our question is name two crystalline and four amorphous allotropes of carbon. So examples of crystalline allotrope of carbon are diamond, graphite and fullerene that is C60 molecule and amorphous allotropes of carbon are charcoal, lamp black, coal and coke. Question is compare the structure of crystal of diamond and graphite with special reference to the reason for diamond being the hardest natural substance while graphite is one of the softest. So we have to compare them structurally and we have to show that why one is hardest and the other one is softest. And second question is compare the electrical and thermal conductivity property of these two crystalline allotropes of carbon. First understand the comparison of the structure. So this is diamond structure and this is graphite structure. As we can see in diamond structure, one carbon atom is attached with four different carbon atoms 
four other carbon atoms and they are making tetrahedron pattern this pattern is very very stable and they are having the strongest bond whereas in graphite the one carbon atom is attached with three other carbon atom and this carbon atoms are attached with weak van der waals force of attraction so this bonds are not as strong as diamond structures bond again the graphite structure is something like this where it is having layers so this layers will slide on one another this is the first layer and this is a second layer so this layer will slide on one another and that is how graphite is different from the diamond here graphite is making a lattice structure and it is two dimensional hexagonal structure whereas here diamond is strong tetrahedron structure now let us see the minute detail of structure of diamond that crystal lattice has three dimensional tetrahedral unit so this is 3d and it is tetrahedral it has a strong bond in between carbon now one carbon is one carbon atom is attached with four other carbon atom and this makes regular tetrahedron pattern very very strong now let us see the details for graphite that crystal lattice has two dimensional hexagonal unit as a two dimensional hexagonal unit one carbon atom is attached with three other carbon atoms and they are held together by weak bonds they are having the weak force and that is weak van der waals force so that is how they are structurally different and due to all these reasons the diamond is strongest whereas graphite is softest second question that comparison of electrical and thermal conductivity of diamond and graphite so graphite is good conductor of electricity and good conductor of heat so graphite is good conductor for both whereas diamond for electricity it is a non conductor diamond cannot pass electricity do not conduct electricity whereas for heat it is a poor conductor our question is with reference to the structure of two crystalline allotropes of carbon that is diamond and graphite we have to give reason that why diamond is inert or unreactive while graphite is comparatively more reactive that means diamond cannot undergo chemical reaction whereas graphite can undergo chemical reaction graphite can react with other substance but diamond cannot react with other substance what is the reason so here this is a structure of diamond of graphite as we can see structurally diamond structure is compact their bonds are strong one carbon is attached with four other carbon atoms and structurally diamond is very very strong and close structure whereas graphite one carbon atom is attached with three other carbon atoms and the molecular bonds are held together with weak van der waals force so due to graphite's open structure it is more prone to the chemical attack and it will easily undergo chemical reaction because bonds can be easily break via chemical reaction and it can react with other substance but diamond is very inert and it will not undergo the chemical attack and it will not undergo any chemical reaction why because diamond has a compact structure whereas graphite has open structure and its molecular bonds are also held together with weak van der waals force which is very easy to break down under chemical reaction so that's why graphite is reactive it is not very strong its structure is open bond can be breakable and that's why graphite is more reactive compared to diamond state the reasons for use of diamond as an item of jewelry so why we are using diamond as an item of jewelry because of two main reason that diamond has a sparkling brilliance it can sparkle it will shine when the light will fall on it and second is this brilliance is due to the refractive index of diamond and due to this property of diamond we can find the application as an item of jewelry as it is most precious and expensive item of jewelry 
with respect to the use of graphite so first reason is graphite is used as a lubricant for heated machine parts whenever this kind of reasons are there we have to discuss the characteristic property of that particular form of a carbon that due to this characteristic property we are using diamond or graphite in this particular field or for this particular application now as a lubricant for heated machine parts so diamond has this properties that it has a parallel layers as we can see into the figure this is a first layer and this is a second layer so this parallel layers will slide on each other so that's why it works best as a lubricant now it is a non volatile it will not volatile at high temperature and it is non sticky so or the used as a lubricant now it can also withstand at high temperature so it is used as a lubricant for heated machine parts first because of its layers which can slide on one another it is non volatile and it can withstand with high temperature so it is used as a lubricant and it is also used in heated machine parts because it can withstand at high temperature as a lining for crucibles used in manufacturing of high grade steel now crucibles are mainly used at very high temperature we know that graphite has a property which can withstand with high temperature and it is also a very good conductor of heat so that's why graphite is used as a lining for crucible used in manufacture of high grade steel for third reason as an electrode in electroplating we are using graphite so due to which properties we are using graphite as an electrode in electroplating so graphite is a good conductor of electricity and relatively inert so it will pass the electricity but it will not react with the ions present in electrolyte then second chemically it is almost inactive with acid so whenever as a as an electrolyte we are adding acid it will not react with acid and it will pass the electricity so that's why it is used as a hardened graphite rod in electroplating of electrode question is state in brief the transformation of vegetable matter to different types of coal varying in carbon content state two uses each of coal coke lamp black or soot so how there will be a transformation of vegetable matter to coal so when layer by layer like this the vegetative matter will come beneath the earth crust there will be an influence of heat and pressure and this will happen for millions and billions of years and after that the coal formation will happen and this is a result of bacterial decomposition so we can write like this that coal formation happen in the nature as a result of slow bacterial decomposition of vegetable matter and it is happening under the influence of heat pressure and limited air over millions of years and then it will transform into coal now different stages of transformation of vegetable matter result in residue rich in varying amount of carbon hence giving rise to different types of coal so it is depending upon how the transformation has happened for how long time how much heat and pressure have been applied to that all these factors will decide and it will decide the content of carbon in the coal and depends on the carbon content we are identifying the different coal that if carbon is 60% then it is termed as peat if carbon is 65% then it is termed as lignite if carbon is 85% then it is termed as bituminous coal and if carbon is 90% pure form of coal and that is known as anthracite now let us understand the uses of coal coke and lamp black lamp black is also known as a soot coal it is used as a cheap fuel like petroleum and coal it is also used in the manufacturing of coke coal gas and synthetic petrol whereas coke is used as a fuel and it burns without smoke whereas coal will burn along with the smoke so this is the difference between coal and coke as a reducing reagent or reducing agent in iron and steel production 
coke is used in chemical reaction the coke is used where we are using this coke as reducing reagent coke is also used as reducing agent in iron and steel production that means it will separate the hydrogen from the iron and from the chemical reaction so at the product side we will get oxidized product and that happen because of the use of coke in the manufacturing of water gas water gas is a combination of carbon monoxide and h2 and we have learned about this in bosch process of producing hydrogen and producer gas so coke is used in bosch process also and in producer gas then comes lamp black or soot so lamp black is used for making printers ink black shoe polish typewriter ribbons and etc it is also used as a filler in rubber tire our question is wood charcoal and amorphous allotrope of carbon reduces heated metallic oxide to metal so metallic oxide is m is metal then o will be the oxide so mo will convert it into m so it, they are reducing metal oxide to metal and give balanced equation to support the statement that wood charcoal will act as a reducing agent here our first equation is in which the zinc oxide is reducing into zinc and here the oxygen what is liberated from the zinc oxide will go along with the carbon and it will generate carbon monoxide so here reduction has happened because zinc oxide is converting into zinc this is removal of oxygen and that's why it is reduction reaction and this happens with the help of carbon so here wood charcoal that is this carbon is working as a reducing agent so here iron 3 oxide is reducing to iron and we have to balance this equation so towards reactant side iron is 2 so here i am adding 2 at front of iron and oxygen is 3 here so here i am adding 3 at front of co so in turn i have to add 3 in front of carbon so our equation is balanced here and this is iron 3 oxide which is converting into iron also as you can see this is a removal of oxygen it is converting into fe so this is reduction and it is happening with the help of wood charcoal so wood charcoal is acting as a reducing agent so any one equation you can write and you can explain that that wood charcoal is acting as a reducing agent our question is carbon dioxide occur both in free state and in combined state state three methods how carbon dioxide is added to atmosphere so carbon dioxide is being added to at atmosphere via this three following ways first is via respiration as we know that we are breathing in air we are taking oxygen and we are exhaling out the carbon dioxide so respiration is one of the biggest activity which living organisms are doing and producing carbon dioxide in the nature second is burning of carbon compound so burning of carbon compounds for example wood petroleum fossil fuel are producing large amount of carbon dioxide in atmosphere then third one is decay and decomposition of organic matter for example animal plant and all this vegetable matter will decomposed in the environment and they are liberating carbon dioxide in the atmosphere our question is in the laboratory preparation of carbon dioxide by action of dilute acid on a metallic carbonate give first one a balanced equation for preparation and second we have to answer three reasons now let us understand this process first so in this laboratory preparation of carbon dioxide we have taken here calcium carbonate in the conical flask and we are adding dilute hcl via thistle funnel to this calcium carbonate and from this conical flask the carbon dioxide gas will travel through this delivery tube and we are collecting it via upward displacement of the air because carbon dioxide gas is heavy and that's why it will settle down just beneath the air so with the simple gas jar we can collect the carbon dioxide gas and 
we are collecting it just below the air because it is heavier compared to air so as and when the carbon dioxide gas will come in the gas jar the air will go up so it is upward displacement of air we are collecting here carbon dioxide gas via upward displacement of air now let us understand the equation here we have taken calcium carbonate so calcium carbonate along with the hcl hcl we have taken and that is dilute so we have to mention here that this is dilute hydrochloric acid so as a result we will get here calcium chloride that is cacl2 along with that we will get water and we will get carbon dioxide now we have to balance this equation as cl2 is here we have to add here 2 and here at the product side we got our hydrogen 2 now let us count the oxygen count so 3 towards the product side and 3 towards reactant side so it is balanced For question B, we have to answer some of the reasons based on this process. So first reason is use of washer bottle containing H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid in the preparation. Now concentrated sulfuric acid is a very good moisture absorbent. So when we are passing carbon dioxide gas via concentrated sulfuric acid, it will absorb the moisture and as a result we will get dry carbon dioxide gas. Because carbon dioxide gas we are generating from the dilute hydrochloric acid where the water concentration is more compared to acid. So if we want to get a dry carbon dioxide gas then we have to pass it through the concentrated sulfuric acid. So it will absorb all the moisture and as a result we will get dry carbon dioxide gas. Second, we are not collecting the carbon dioxide gas along with the water. We are not collecting it along with the water because it is fairly soluble in the water. And as a result, we will get less quantity of carbon dioxide gas. So we are collecting it along with the air. It is heavy also compared to air. So it will settle down in the gas jar. It will not escape out and it will not get mixed also with the air. So we are collecting the carbon dioxide gas via upward displacement of air and not along with the water. Our third reason is not using dilute sulfuric acid as a reactant in preparation. What we have used here is dilute hydrochloric acid and not H2SO4. What is the reason for that? So when we are using dilute sulfuric acid instead of dilute hydrochloric acid, this calcium will react with SO4 and we will get calcium sulfate as a result. And Along with that, we will get H2O and carbon dioxide. But this calcium sulfate is insoluble hard material and it will make a hard marble chip and slowly the reaction will stop. So that's why we are not using the sulfuric acid and we are using HCl. If we are using CaCO3 along with the HCl, then as a result, we will get CaCl2 calcium chloride which is not forming any chip so reaction will continue and we will get carbon dioxide gas but here calcium sulfate is an insoluble material it will make insoluble coating of calcium sulfate on a marble chip and so the reaction will slowly stop this marble chip what we have added over here on top of that it will make a coating like this so it will stop reacting with sulfuric acid so it will stop the reaction and we will not get the product so that's why we are not using sulfuric acid the question is how would you prove experimentally that first carbon dioxide does not support combustion so here we have taken one gas jar and into that we have filled carbon dioxide so in this the carbon dioxide gas is there into this gas jar and slowly we are taking the burning candle inside the jar slowly we are inserting the burning candle into the jar after some time when we are inserting it completely inside we will see that the candle will extinguish and this will prove that carbon dioxide does not support combustion because here candle got only carbon dioxide not any other gas which will support 
the combustion so it extinguished and carbon dioxide if it would have supported the combustion then candle would not have been extinguished but it has been extinguished so it says that carbon dioxide do not support combustion then second it is slightly acidic in nature again we are taking this carbon dioxide filled test tube and we are inserting blue litmus paper moist blue litmus paper sometime we will see that it will turning into red so this proves that carbon dioxide is slightly acidic in nature our question is starting from carbon dioxide how would you obtain weak acid that means as a reactant we have to take carbon dioxide and as a product we should get weak acid so from carbon dioxide the weak acid what we get is carbonic acid that is h2co3 so let us first write the equation for the same that we are taking carbon dioxide plus we are taking water as a result we will get h2co3 and that is carbonic acid so carbon dioxide will get dissolved in water and it will give us carbonic acid b a fertilizer so from carbon dioxide we will get fertilizer and fertilizer is nh2 twice co and that is named as urea so in the preparation of urea the carbon dioxide is used as one of the important reagent so when we are taking ammonia ammonia is nh3 so nh3 plus carbon dioxide and we will get the urea as a result which is a fertilizer so nh2 twice cu that is urea plus water so the fertilizer is urea here and this is our balanced equation to get the fertilizer from carbon dioxide from carbon dioxide a highly poisonous gas so highly poisonous gas is carbon monoxide so formation of carbon monoxide from the carbon dioxide is when we are taking carbon dioxide along with the coke this is coke and coke is carbon so when the carbon monoxide we are passing over the heated coke we will get carbon monoxide and it is poisonous gas comes d black particle of carbon from carbon dioxide so when there is a reaction between magnesium metal and carbon dioxide we will get as a result magnesium oxide that is 2 mgo magnesium oxide plus carbon now burning magnesium ribbon in presence of carbon dioxide will produce magnesium oxide and black carbon particle so this is the product what they are asking for that is black carbon particle our question is state how would you convert carbon dioxide to metallic carbonate first of all let us understand what is this metallic carbonate carbonate we know that is co3 and that is along with the metal any metal we can take here for example we can take potassium we can take calcium any metal along with the carbonate is known as metallic carbonate now let us understand the for molecular formula of all so it is na and co3 co3 is combining capacity is 2 and na is combining capacity is 1 so by a criss cross method we will get molecular formula that is na2co3 so this is a metallic carbonate of sodium so this is sodium carbonate now along with calcium it is caco3 calciums and carbonates both combining capacity is 2 2 so in turn we will get molecular formula this is caco3 this is calcium carbonate all these are termed as metallic carbonate so here carbon dioxide is converting into metallic carbonate so m plus co3 we required here now they are saying that using basic oxide so we have to use basic oxide now oxide which are basic in nature so all metallic oxides are basic in nature and all non metallic oxide are acidic in nature what are the non metallic oxide non metallic oxide are carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide these are non metallic oxide and metallic oxides are sodium carbonate calcium carbonate and all if you have any doubt regarding oxide please watch my video based on oxide and nature of the oxide 
Now here, let us coming back to our question that carbon dioxide is converting into metallic carbonate with the help of basic oxide. So we have to use here metallic oxide here, any metallic oxide we are using here and they have said us that for example, sodium oxide. So here we are going to use sodium oxide. Sodium oxide is metallic oxide and it is basic oxide. It is basic in nature. So here in this equation, we are going to use carbon dioxide. Then we are going to use basic oxide that is sodium oxide. So it is sodium oxide formula is Na2O that is sodium oxide. And we are going to convert this into metallic carbonate. So metal and carbonate that is CO3. Now this metal in this reaction, we have only one metal and that is sodium. So this is going to be Na2CO3. So our reaction is something like this, that carbon dioxide plus Na2O has to give us Na2CO3. Now let us write the balanced chemical equation for this equation. So carbon dioxide is along with the basic oxide and that is our Na2O that is sodium oxide. And as a result, we will get Na2CO3 and that is sodium carbonate this equation is balanced or not sodium is 2 here here also towards product side it is 2 now let us check the count of oxygen 3 is towards product side and 3 is towards reactant side so our reaction is balanced our question is when carbon dioxide is bubbled into lime water the lime water will turn milky and when we are passing excess of carbon dioxide this milkiness will disappear so we have to give balanced equation to support this statement. Now under this statement, there are two different reaction. First reaction is when we are passing carbon dioxide lime water and second is excess carbon dioxide we are passing into the lime water. Reaction in which carbon dioxide we are passing into lime water and lime water will turn milky. And this milkiness in the lime water is because of the formation of calcium carbonate. Now, after passing excess carbon dioxide into this calcium carbonate solution, it will form calcium hydrogen carbonate that is CaHCO3 twice. This is calcium hydrogen carbonate and this is soluble in the water. Since it is soluble in the water, we will feel that milkiness of calcium carbonate has been removed from the water and milkiness disappear because it has converted into other substance where this substance was insoluble and it shows the milkiness in water this substance is soluble so we will feel that the milkiness has disappeared the question is explain the term dry ice state its application give three reasons why carbon dioxide finds application in fire extinguisher so first let us understand dry ice liquid carbon dioxide on sudden evaporation it will result into freezing and formation of solid carbon dioxide and that is termed as dry ice now why dry ice solid carbon dioxide is useful to extinguish the fire because dry ice freezes faster and it lasts longer than ordinary ice then second and second reason is it fights electrical and oil fire since the liquid carbon dioxide solidifies to give snowy dry ice which will douse the fire using magnesium ribbon how would you prove that given gas jar is containing carbon dioxide so magnesium ribbon is burning in presence of carbon dioxide then it is producing magnesium oxide and carbon so this produce black color carbon particle so when the magnesium is producing black color carbon particle that means the gas jar containing carbon dioxide so it proves that gas jar is containing carbon dioxide now let us balance this equation here oxygen is in two and towards product side it is one so i am adding here two and towards reactant side i am adding two at front of magnesium so our equation is balanced now our question is state the function of concentrated sulfuric acid in the laboratory preparation of carbon monoxide from oxalic acid and this is not a formic acid 
Now function of concentrated sulfuric acid will remain same. Either we are taking formic acid or oxalic acid that it will remove water molecule and give us carbon monoxide. So first let us see the formic acid reaction that formic acid and that is HCOOH will react with when we are heating it with concentrated H2SO4 we will get as a result carbon monoxide and water. Here HCOOH is formic acid formula and we will get carbon monoxide gas. But this is not our answer. Our answer is along with the oxalic acid. So oxalic acid formula is COOH and COOH. So this we can also represent like this that carbon with double bond C and OH and same is with another carbon O and H. This is the formula of oxalic acid. Heating oxalic acid along with the concentrated sulfuric acid, we will get a mixture of two gases that carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and water. Now let us see our equation is balanced or not. Two carbon molecules towards reactant side and two carbon molecule towards product side. Then oxygen count is four towards reactant side and here also it is one, three and four. Then hydrogen is two, here also hydrogen is so our equation is balanced and since this equation is not there in our portion we can simply mention the equation like this that oxalic acid when we are warming it along with the concentrated sulfuric acid we will get carbon monoxide gas and it will remove water molecule. So in either case, in this reaction or in this second reaction, the function of concentrated sulfuric acid will remain same that it is going to remove the water molecule from the reactant. Our question is, give reason why carbon monoxide is considered highly poisonous gas. State why it is dangerous to sleep in a closed room with a fuel burning. So limited supply of burning a fuel will generate carbon monoxide. Now once this carbon monoxide will get into inhalation, it is dangerous and it could lead to death. So it is dangerous to sleep in a closed room with fuel burning. Now second, to be in the vicinity of the smoker is also a dangerous situation because the burning tobacco will also generate the traces of carbon monoxide. Once we are being in the vicinity of the smokers, it will lead us to inhale some of the traces of carbon monoxide which can be dangerous for us. Our question is convert carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide using two different methods. So first method is when carbon monoxide is burning along with the oxygen, it will give us carbon dioxide and heat will be liberated at the end. Then second method is when carbon monoxide is reacting with steam at 450 degrees Celsius along with Fe2O3 we will get carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So Fe2O3 we are taking as a catalyst and the temperature is 450 degrees Celsius. So we will get here carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas. So these are the two methods by which we can convert carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. Our question is state how carbon monoxide finds application in the metallurgy of iron. So carbon monoxide will reduce the metallic oxide to the metal and that is how it is important in metallurgy. Second, preparation of alcohol. So carbon monoxide is reacting with hydrogen gas along with the zinc oxide and 450 degrees Celsius temperature. We will get methyl alcohol that is CH3OH and that is how it is important in preparation of alcohol.